Pre fire pupils, we're going to be looking at some solving quadratic inequalities. So a quadratic inequality will look very, very similar to any quadratic you've dealt with previously, but rather than being equal to zero, there'll be an inequality sign. So greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. Our method is that we'll always look to try and get in a position to sketch the graph. And this, this graph is very, very important because it gives you an idea of what's, what exactly is happening at any, uh, any particular point. Once we've sketched the graph, then we will look to try and solve by inspection, i.e. by looking at the graph and making a judgment. Okay, we've got two examples here, and they give the two different type of solutions that you'll be asked, just at the very, very last stage, how you're going to interpret exactly what's happening within your graph. So the start will look very, very similar, because what we're looking to try and do to sketch is to find our roots. Okay, once we have the roots, we'll be able to get the shape very, very easily, and that will be a very quick sketch. So in question one, we want to know when this quadratic, x squared plus 2x minus 8, when is it greater than zero? So let's try and or work towards our sketch. So to find our roots, our roots occur when y is equal to zero. So let's make the quadratic equal to zero. And in that situation, quadratic equal to zero every single time we factorise and solve. Again, make sure you're factorising how you are comfortable. In this particular case, the only way I can get x squared is x by x. To get my 8, I've got an option of 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. And to get my plus 2x, I'm going to have to have a difference of 4 and 2. And that will be plus 4 minus 2. Make sure you check your factorising. Make sure you're confident in what you've done. Okay, factorise and solve. So roots occur, x equals 2. x equals minus 4. What this allows is us to draw a very, very basic sketch of exactly what's happening within our graph. x and y, our roots occur at 2, and minus 4, and we have a positive x squared, so we have a u-shaped graph. So something that will look like that. There's our minus 4, and there's our 2. Going back to actually what the question is asked, it's saying, when is this graph greater than 0? So if we look at our x-axis, anything above the x-axis is greater than 0. And anything below the x-axis is less than zero. So if we expect, inspect our graph, and when we start on our left-hand side, so we start here, then the first bit of graph that we meet is above. So that's what I'm looking for. The next part of my graph is below, so not what I'm after. Again, as it continues and changes direction, before it hits the 2, again, it's below the axis, so it's not what I'm after, and then it hits the 
x-axis, it hits the root at 2, and that's what I'm looking at. So the bits that I'm interested in is when that quadratic is greater than 0, is it these two ticks. So basically, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And be more specifically, left of minus 4 and right of 2. So my solution for this graph is when is this quadratic greater than 0? When is this graph showing me it's greater than 0? It's showing me to the left-hand side of minus 4. So when it is less than minus 4. I when x is less than minus 4. And also when it is to the right of 2, i.e. greater than 2. So x is greater than 2. And that's us solved our inequality. So we can say that the graph is greater than 0, it's above the x-axis, less than minus 4, and greater than 2. In our second example, you see it does look, certainly looks a wee bit different with the minus. Okay, but the main bit of the solution will come towards the end. How we are going to write our final part of our solution. So again, let's start. Let's try and get a graph drawn. We need some roots. So y is equal to 0. 3 minus 2x minus x squared is equal to 0. You, again, looking to factorise. We can take our, all our, uh, our terms and multiply both sides by minus 1 or take everything to the right-hand side and get a positive. Because we've got the equals there, what I'm going to do is just going to factorise it as it is and then I'm going to make sure I can double-check it to make sure it's correct. Again, the only way I can get that x squared is having the x and x. In this case, the only way I can get the 3 is the 3 and 1. And I'm looking for minus 2. There's a single one. There's 3x. So if I have minus 3x and I have plus 1x, I get minus 2x. And once again, make sure you check, you factorise it correctly. Solve. Minus 3. x is equal to 1. So at this stage, there actually hasn't been the, the significant change. Uh, yes, it was a negative. But the change will occur at the end. So there's x and there's y. My roots at minus 3 and 1. And the fact that I have a negative x squared in the question, it is a maximum turning point in this case. So that's it looking for there. And again, if I'm looking at this axis here, Then, when is it greater than or equal to zero? So anything above is greater than. Anything below is less than. But what's significant here is when it's equal to zero. So my two roots will be included within my solution. So let's inspect this graph. Starting from the left-hand side, so starting from here. Is that greater than zero? No, it's not, because it's underneath the axis. So that's not what I'm looking for. Then hits minus three, which we've acknowledged will be part of a solution, because greater than or equals. So when it hits the axis, is fine. It then goes above. As we go. As it turns, it continues to still be above. Hits the 1. Again, equals is 
going to be what we're looking for. And it goes below the, ax at the axis on the right hand side of one. Okay, so the fact that we've actually got a continuous solution means the twist comes at the very end how we're going to write this. So looking that when is it greater than or equal to zero? What's well, greater than or equal to zero to the right hand side of three? Sorry, minus three. But it's also to the left hand side of the one. So when it is less than or equal to one. Okay, the fact that it's a continuous solution, I can write that in one single statement. X is less than or equal to 1. This reads, X is greater than or equal to minus 3. Or, if I wrote, thought about it in a different direction, minus 3 is less than or equal to X. And that's... How I write my solution. So these two statements in this line are represented by the single statement as my solution. Minus 3 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 1. That indicates the area on and above the axis. Okay, and as always, let's look at the PowerPoint for questions.